and welcome uh, I... <laughs> to episode eight of the Tap Haven podcast. <laughs> Did you We're finish? So Did you finish it? It's it so professional. Oh. So professional. We weren't. We I weren't am. counting down from like a hundred in the uh, in the green room before we went live. That wasn't a thing we were doing. I mean, Sorry, it totally was. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> and so, how have y'all been this week? How's the week been? How's the oh, week man. been treating y'all? Anthony, all I can this. <laughs> all I can remember is today. And if you guys look at the most recent pictures posted in our chat, my day started with a two-mile hike all the way down and up the mountain to the river to chase my dogs. To the river Oof. to jet. They ran away again. They ran two and three quarter miles today. I, oh, I slipped and slid and climbed and and trudged about two miles myself because guess what we're in the middle of a winter storm winter storm means not snow but slush slush is very slippery okay um, for them that's yeah. just that's just the extra fun factor they're like no, i'm going they loved it. oh they loved it so much because you know what happened on our way back when everything was nice and cozy well first off they're trying to leave me a lot and i they freaking they're they're still going hard but second off deku decided to roll and poop twice of course, oh. it's typical. Oh, he's, he's... <clears throat> so yeah, I can't remember anything before this morning. <laughs> wow, you know, sick. <laughs> and you know, it, my day was also pretty interesting. Like the um, so yesterday, I had judo practice. I was gonna go to judo practice. I go outside, and I'm like, man, my tire looks a little bit low. And so I was going to check my tire and my neighbor is like checking the side of his house, but awkwardly. And oh, dude. <laughs> he's like standing way too close to me. And, and so I'm filling up the tire and I'm checking the tire and then I'm looking over and I kind of stand up like, hey, how are you doing good? And he's like, do you live here? I'm like, no, no. I'm just <laughs> filling up this tire at this house that I don't obviously live at yes i live here um and he's like can i show you something and he brings me into his yard and y'all y'all have both seen the back of my yard now we have like a little bit of greenery it's kind of right. flat and then we have like a little slope with a bunch of trees on it mm. and then there's a metal fence in his yard on the fence there's all these different trees and one of the trees is like right on the fence and so he brings me over and he's like uh, and he doesn't speak a lot of English, so I, okay. I'm trying to to work with him to figure out kind of what he's saying. Right. And he's like, "Storm and lightning hit," and I came outside, and he shows me this tree that is missing pretty much all of the inside, and it's got to be the largest tree on our property. And mm, that's <sighs> not good. And so now. <laughs> Of course, you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars later, we we've taken care of said tree problem, and had yeah. to get that taken out today. Um, Fudge. So yeah, it had oh. it, it had apparently rotted all the way through, and yep. it was just hidden, and so we couldn't see it from the like from the outside. It looked totally fine. Yeah, there was a storm while we were at your house, Nat fudge and and we saw our ring go off and this guy came up our neighbor came up to our door that's what he was coming oh. to tell us about then <clears throat> during that storm lightning hit the tree from his side and took off the outer layer of bark now you so can see can through see the tree the he could okay, see yeah, all yeah. the way through the tree almost yeah 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 okay so he had a cross section while you were like yeah. oh, everything's fine <laughs> yeah you couldn't you could not tell it all from our direction so it was it was uh, a fun little thing, but we we called the guy, got it taken down, got a few quotes. But how how close was the tree to your? Like, was it if the um, tree came down, would it have been an issue to your? Oh uh, yeah, house or oh yeah, it okay. could have gone either yeah, way. You had to go. Yeah, you yeah. Could, it you was get rid of it. it was right you in. You just called me. I became a lumberjack when I moved here. I couldn't I mean, take no, nothing down. No, you did not. <laughs> this is you a know, huge. Yeah, you all know me. Did not take down. Anthony, yeah, I got so many Anthony, trees over here. Anthony, no, you did not. <laughs> yes, I, I did. Don't care. I don't care how many trees you have. You're not a lumberjack. I'm gonna report it. 
<laughs> I'm going to record it. You're going to see me take down the You're going to listen to me, God. That's, that's going to be his thing. We're going we're gonna to see him in plaid. He's going to be like that, uh, that, that guy that's yeah, famous on TikTok. I know TikTok, who you're talking about. Where he wears the super tight lumberjack shirt and he just chops wood. He's got you like know that there 15 are million of those guys. Right? Nah, there's yeah, one no, guy. That, no, there's one guy. Oh, no, I know there's one guy. guy. There's a lot of people who are trying to be him. That's yeah, what yeah, trying, yeah. But there's only one that's guy. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Thorne Bradley. <laughs> a lot of people trying to be him. I'm the only one that's kind of like him. <laughs> to, he, he is. is he is. A, quite he is quite no, hot legitimately i sympathize <laughs> with him because I've, I've listened to him talk about how he's like i'm not just doing this for fun i mean I, it is fun mm. but like do you see where i live i need this for warmth need- <laughs> and yeah. I, that's what i do too i that's chop in trees all the time for warmth it is a lot of work but oh, it's good Jesus. it's real muscle it's not popcorn muscle like some people <laughs> i my week was pretty much uneventful all the way up until today, and there really hasn't been any changes. I've I've had nothing, literally nothing. Um, oh. I am the boring uh, vanilla person today in the sense that literally nothing has changed since Monday. The only thing that I could probably say is of note is that I am witnessing the end of my education era and the beginning of my next chapter in life and like kind of watching it slowly like like decay from the inside it's yeah yeah. i mean concentration right (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. okay all right all right all right well well, uh, yeah well to help you kind of you know mediate your soul with that uh, situation, we have hopefully a, a fun little try for you today. Today, yes, you did. You did. Okay. We were able to get our hands on uh, quite a fun one today. Today, we, our gracious host means he, he, I, the amazing savior who has shared he, so much alcohol with no us idea, co-host people that just no bring idea. shame. Oh my gosh! I was One able of these days to we're get us. buy a bottle, and we're gonna like ship it out to like the other two people, and it's gonna be like completely uh. novel. We're gonna be like, "How do you get alcohol to like the other people though? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I, do I, I just buy I had it to here drive. and then put it inside the mailbox? Like, what do we do? No, <laughs> because uh, interstate laws dictate that's illegal. Funnily enough, but why? Why not? <laughs> that, that, why that'll not? make no sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> So I had to drive to Texas. Holy crap. Am I supposed to pour out this country. whole thing? No, so dude. so it is 300 milliliters. Oh, so that would mistake. be, yeah. So that would be 10 ounces. I was like, this is the most um, Eric's ever put in me. <laughs> so Anthony. so yeah. this, this should be at least a few glasses for you to enjoy. Um, so I call my wife. this is the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. And mm, man, there's like a cigar, <laughs> stately. <laughs> man, there's there's some fun stories about this. So a lot of people like the the Joseph Magnus, the regular, in general. They've been producing whiskey for quite a while, and uh, essentially, this kind of came around because they wanted something to go along with cigars. Now the cigar blend doesn't. It isn't really there aren't rules for what a cigar blend is but kind of the idea is that this whiskey should cut through the intense aromas and flavors that come with a cigar so if you see cigar blend on pretty much any spirit some of them might have different meanings but at least for bourbons and whiskeys you're gonna see that these usually have very strong cutting flavors that are meant to cut right to the point and get past the cigar that it's intended to be enjoyed with. Now, uh, we have some cool tasting notes on the, bo- the bottle. Uh, unfortunately, they are unreadable in the current lighting <laughs> atmosphere that I have. Now, <laughs> cool tasting notes. <laughs> He's blind. I, I can't read that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just hold up the camera. We'll read it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So this one, funnily enough, it's it's not that high a, a proof, really. We're looking at 54% alcohol. So we're looking, you know, 108, proof about. It's a peach, fuzz, peach fuzz on your chest, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a blend of 11 and 18-year-old whiskeys. Um, and we should be getting a lot of tobacco, spice, leather, vanilla, according to their... Um, Say it with a little bit of those dried fruits, you know, the figs, the prunes, the apricots. You know, I love those. <clears throat> now on the Boy, nose. I'm getting that off the nose. Damn. Yeah. On the nose, I definitely get a lot of those dried fruits. Yeah. Like literally like immediately. It smells like a, uh, like a jam jar. Yeah. Definitely a lot of the dried fruits on the nose. That's almost all I get. I don't know if I get yeah. too much of anything else. This is probably... I, I gotta tell you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'd tell you guys about the time I sniffed too much bourbon. I, were, no. were we with you? Okay, so right now, because this is temporarily too full, <laughs> and hopefully my wife brings you, me a funnel. You poured sir. the whole thing. I did. Sir? <laughs> I didn't realize how big it was. Uh, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> you know, I, I learned a few weeks ago that enjoying a bourbon, a nice bourbon, while you're leisurely watching something and it's dark and it smells really good, it's kind of dangerous because I got it so close to my nose that I snorted bourbon for the first oh, time and dude. that was very painful. Oh, man. Very painful. Indeed. Yeah, I can so imagine. I'm a little scared to smell this right now, but I think I hear my wife trying to. Did you already put that in your in. mouth, Eric? Wait, <laughs> wait. Pause. You did not see that. the The people can rewind and check. There was absolutely no liquid to mouth inhalation. Okay. Uh, I I, I saw you like <laughs> do a like a little lip thing. No, 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 no. I was like, mm. definitely <laughs> did not drink it. There is no okay. way any of it went in my mouth. Maybe a little bit, but that's okay. Pause. Pause. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Anthony, are you gonna are you gonna join us on our first little wash? I will. Yeah, I just got this just in time <laughs> because uh, to, I didn't want to like to pour, my, pour my mouth out. all up in it. If you so since this is a safe hard, place, the leather. Since this is a safe place, not a place where you know, like the internet's gonna make fun of me or something. Um, <laughs> oh, which, look is the top one a proper size for like a tasting? Do do, do y'all know? It's so the bottom one. Everyone can be a little bit different. So the bottom one is likely one ounce, and the smaller mm. one is likely one ounce, and the larger one is likely an ounce and a half. Now, yeah. it depends on where you go, but typically a general pour at a bourbon, like a bourbon bar, is going to be about two ounces. Your typical oh, shot okay. is going to be an ounce and a half. Mm. But it I'll depends. go with the ounce and a half one. Oh, or no. Should I go with the ounce and a half one or two tiny? Two ounces. Two ounces, dude. Two tinies. Okay. Two tinies. Two tinies. Oh, okay. Here it goes. You got this. Mm. These are really good bottles. M. Oh damn! They, they pour really well. You get a lot of evolution. Yeah. You. Yeah, man. I'm waiting That's for. Good. I'm waiting to. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna. Okay, that smells really good. I'm a little behind, but that smells really good. <laughs> I'm not going to force my impressions onto Anthony yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy another sip while he kind of gets acquainted with the glass. I see this is really dangerous because this is the type I smelled when I accidentally snorted some bourbon. It smelled like this. Wow. Jesus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know how, um, when you go to like Charlie's Chocolate Factory, or uh -huh. sorry, Charlie and the Chocolate there's a chocolate what? factory. Charlie what? happens to always be there. <laughs> uh, and he finds like the every flavor gobstopper things that are like a meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This thing made me, <clears throat> it was almost like I tasted a meal for a second and then it turned into a normal bourbon. It's a meal of a whiskey, dude. 
Sorry, uh, bourbon. Bur- Sorry, bur- bur- bourbon. Bourbon. It's bourbon. <laughs> it is a bourbon. It's a meal of a bourbon. <laughs> now that was cool. Yeah, it 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 has a lot of flavors character. going on. It has a lot of character. of character. Now this is a. Funnily enough, this is a harsher whiskey in general. I would say it's got a lot of heat and kick. I okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, off, <laughs> go ahead. You don't. You don't. I don't agree. This thing is don't smooth. Agree. This this thing is smooth. Yeah, really? Yeah, I agree with that. This it's thing very is smooth, smooth for me too. I mean, it's nice and hot. Like there's a good heat, but I'm not overwhelmed at all. It's not like a rye. Like I'm not feeling like I don't feel the the burn as intensely on the mm-hmm. path down. It's definitely it still gives me that Kentucky hug, but um, no, I feel I, the I, no. Burn, I, I definitely do think it, I get a little bit of the rye flavors in the middle, um, but I also get a lot of that tobacco. Right at the t- like near Definitely. the tail end, there's a mm. bunch of that tobacco flavor. If you like, I think mm. right before the tobacco, there's like a brief glimpse of leather in there as well, as well as on the nose. If you get if you get into the uh, if you get really into the bottle for it and pull, it's got like right at the end, it has that kind of almost um, that tanning. Uh, process after effect of the leather processing it's really good i I could see that i yeah i get some of that like i get a lot of the dried fruits and i think Mm -hmm. still on the nose i get a lot of dried fruits but i could see how it's almost like dried fruits in a leather factory type of deal you know like Mm -hmm. i I feel like i'm chewing on my belt (laughs) <laughs> that's that's not a good suggestion there that's you're doing nothing for anybody who's listening <laughs> my leather belt my leather belt my leather belt though i chew on that every night it's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait exactly how do you know pause <laughs> how do you know that I say that a lot this episode i don't know what's happening <laughs> now one thing i would say just as a fun little history thing so that <clears throat> Uh, there and this it's kind of a weird setup how they do the Joseph Magnus but this might be the first whiskey that we've had on the show that has a lot of different variations that people are going to have experienced and can I, can I save you from the internet real quick yeah so Eric just said fun history I know most people that never makes any sense but we had a teacher named Mrs. G and she would trip little kids going to her classroom when she was an elementary school teacher. So we had some fun history. Okay. So back off. History can be fun if you got the right teacher. Oh, a hundred percent. So essentially their goal was to make this whiskey that goes with cigars really well. They did this by blending some of the Joseph Magnus bourbon with other bourbons. Now, initially, from what I've understand. From what I understand, she used some MGP bourbon. Now, MGP is like the premium spirits company, right? Widely regarded as kind of top of the line type of deal. And so you mix some of that in, some high rye mash, you know, some, some of the 18 year. And then they finished it in Armagnac. Armagnac tasks right Armagnac. Yeah. that is that how you pronounce it is that the correct pronunciation of so I mean the spelling and i can tell you a-r-m-a-g-n-a-c and i'm Armagnac. sure s- Armagnac. wow hmm. so Armagnac barrels are, are french oak barrels that initially were used you for- should have just said french dude <laughs> I mean, they're they're just specific. <laughs> the French don't say gni. <laughs> they say gni. Gni. We say the Nazis say gni. Gni. Okay, continue. I'm so sorry. So you're in your flow. Then they finish it in Armagnac barrels, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully, nobody. Uh, uh, hopefully, I didn't butcher that. Um. So, and but over time. From what I understand, 
the MGP bourbons and some of these bourbons and whiskeys that they were mixing with got a little bit more expensive. And so, for example, uh, it has been said that the earlier batches used some fresh casks, but some of the later basket uh, batches used second fill casks. And then l even later after that, I, I, from what I understand, they've changed it even more. And so there are groups of batches and you can find the batch number. So, for example, we're, we're drinking batch 222. Right, barrel two, number two, two? forty-five. Yeah, Who's special. Barrel two, two, two. That's lucky. And barrel or forty-five. Batch two, two, two. Barrel like forty-five. We're staring down the barrel of a forty-five. 45. Yeah, that's kind of that's a cool a barrel to have, honestly. That's pr that's pretty damn cool, Eric. Yeah. That's some cool little uh, happenstance cool. life to happen to you. And so, while we're drinking our our barrel forty-five, right. Mm. Um, our, our experience of this may be vastly different than what comes down the line or what people can get from previous batches. There's going to be some huge discrepancies there. Um, but what I think is typical of this whiskey in particular from the research that I've done is you're always going to get that rich tobacco leather with dried mm -hmm. fruits with a little bit of rye. Mm -hmm. And I think I get a lot of those things. I get a lot of those, that leather and tobacco, a lot of the dried fruits and right in the smack dab middle of it, sandwiched between like a, a good sandwich. Yeah. Like a rye s'more. Mm -hmm. It's like right in the middle is mm -hmm. that wonderful rye flavor. Yep. And it, um, it works out really, really well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hold off my uh, rating, obviously, until we get to that portion. But I will say um, this smells great. This feels great. And it tastes good. I'm just going to oh. I'm going to say that now before we get into the reviews. Okay. Um, Interesting. I will also say that. Um, this ex this whiskey has explained to me what my taste is and it's actually mm. much simpler than i thought it was okay okay and we we need to dive, dive you know we go into this a little bit further this, obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously. yeah like what, so, what, what um what is your what is your taste i used to think that i needed like incredible nuance and not and novelty for it to be like a, a good bourbon or a good drinking experience just in general and that has been something that I've carried into most of my alcoholic experiences. Like I don't do beers because I really don't feel you can really dive, um, fully dive into a wide breadth of novelty without running into some really weird um, deviations. Like um, there are some pineapple based beers that I've had that I was just like, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm good. Um, that's not to say that beer isn't good for those of you guys who enjoy beer. Like all, all the power to you. I, I used to be one of you, but I think I think I subscribe to a different cloth now. Um, but uh, I used to bring that to bourbon and through that whiskey. But with this bourbon, mm -hmm. I now realize I need three things. I need heat. I need uh, I need spice. Uh, sorry, I need heat. I need uh, some form of dried confectionery uh, sweet uh, tongue oh, yeah. to it. The, the taste, I, yeah, or the, smell. And I, the taste, the taste, and I need some form of warm scent to go along with it. If you can do those three, it's it's wonderful. Uh -huh. You know, you remind when you talk about it like that, you remind me of uh, imagining what butterbeer tastes like when reading yeah. Harry Potter and never being able to find it. But maybe fire whiskey where it's just like you, there's like there's a trifecta that you just described of mm. the experience. And when all three come together, it's just like it's just whoa. special, man. Yeah. You're like, OK. <clears throat> so I'm going to yeah. I'm going to shift things up. I feel like we've been doing this out of order for okay. too long. We've been doing it in the reverse order it needs to be. 
Nat, how much would you spend on this whiskey? Oh, man. How much would I spend? Oh, my God. <laughs> you walk into the store. It has this price tag, and you're buying it. I would pay... Oh God! Do I need to give an exact number, or exact can I number. give you a range? Exact oh, number. Shit. You got to give us hopes and dreams on a shelf. We I need to would. know the the amount that makes it to where your wallet can't not be taken out. And I already got my number. So. I think I have my number, but I'm like I'm fluctuating. Me. Like I'm 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 rolling around in it. It's it's terrible. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and make a decision and just cho choose from the roulette that's going through my head right now. Um, I would probably I would pull the trigger on this for maximum uh, one seventy five. Interesting. One seventy five. Wow. Okay. Maximum one seventy five so, on this. Okay. Is and, my turn? Yeah. Go for it. So I have talked about this a lot. So I finally brought myself Woodford's Reserve along here, which was both a great decision and a mistake. Uh, <laughs> because when tasting and smelling the Woodford's Reserve, I'm like, yeah, I can drink this. This is fine. Uh, but this uh, cigar, basically, you know, this 45 barrel is... At least four times better. <laughs> Literally, I'm sitting here thinking it's four times better. So I double checked, and Woodford's is forty bucks. So I would easily pay a hundred and sixty for this, like yeah. wow. right away, because it is it's four times better. Yeah. That's I mean that is a cool way of looking. I mean that's entirely reasonable to yeah. um to think about it. Like now, yeah, I, I I have the unfortunate. Uh, yep. side effect yep. of knowing <laughs> both the MSRP <laughs> and hit us with the details, baby. Don't don't hurt me. <laughs> so, <laughs> from what I understand, y'all are right on the money almost. Uh, yes, MSRP wow. is about oh, one one eighty. Now, okay, I think I can do that. Ooh, I could definitely do that. Now, here's the problem. Oh, oh no, shit. you're probably not finding this one at one eighty. And the problem is, is that everybody's like y'all. Yeah, we're buying it at 180. <laughs> so typically, your your MSRP, if you find this in a state that has they set the prices and they aren't setting it too far above MSRP. Now, unfortunately, your state upcharges on this one because. My God, because you got to remember, I bought this with you. Oh, so I know what bro, this I cost. <laughs> I I know what this cost oh. in North Wait, Carolina. What did it cost here? It was about two forty. Yeah. Is this the one that? Yeah. Oh, this is the one that you bought when we were at the. Uh, yeah. The second yeah. one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, at the second man. one. So I. Hmm. I don't know if you're getting out the door with this under 240. I think that's about the lowest you're going to find it. That's that's pretty much what the state regulated places are probably to. going to charge for it. Care to? About 240? Yeah, about 240. Okay. Okay. Now, if you can find it at MSRP and you can find it under 200. Where's the distillery? Now, it is so... Let's, let's see. <laughs> I can drive like 700 miles on a tank. Now, I don't I'll know. Do I don't know if they're going to sell it for no, MSRP. Not from the what? No. Now, they, they said it. Now, they said it. This distillery, Joseph Magnus Distillery. Where that is. Look, that, look that up because Where that I, is. I'm, I'm looking, curious. They're, they're saying. If it's in Kentucky, you know, when we take. When we go on the, what are we going to call this? The wife bourbon trail. The wife bourbon trail. <laughs> They're saying this is in Michigan. But I... Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, they're saying what? it's in Michigan. Yeah. Lies. Deceit. Uh, Google, uh, Google might be... Uh, Hi. Uh, no, it's <laughs> distilled. So Joseph Magnus known. Straight it's Bourbon Whiskey bit. distilled in Indiana, but bottled in Kentucky. Okay. 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 So it's in Kentucky, okay, so where in you Kentucky. have bottles. Okay. At least. Yeah. Interesting. Distilled in Indiana, Distilled in bottled Indiana. in Kentucky. Yeah. 
There must be some weird legal reasons for that. Gotta be. I'm or sure. They wanted to be on the bourbon trail. I wonder if they're on the bourbon trail. I don't know where my I, little. Oh, it trail looks is. like it. it, it uh, funnily enough, if you go into their their site, it looks like they moved to Michigan. Um, so they have a, a long history of all their things. 2016 oh. is when they actually did the cigar blend. That's when it was created. Oh damn! Um, this was recent then. And initially, funnily enough, in 2016, this cigar blend MSRP'd at a thousand dollars a bottle and sold out in a month. That was in 2016. That's um, hype. That's got to be hype. Wow. In 2020, they relocated to Holland, Michigan. And they're overlooking, uh, apparently, the, uh, they're trying to reconnect the brand to the legacy of Joseph A. Magnus, who spent many years overlooking Lake Michigan in Odin, Michigan. Hmm. Okay. okay. So well, yeah, it I, looks I like mean, they are in Michigan the, right now. Respect the re- reconnection. Um, don't respect respect the thousand dollar bottle. That must have been hype. That has to be like I can yeah. understand it being really good if it's this level mm. of of flavor. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not letting go of more of more than two hundred. Yeah, like yeah. Like now that I know what the actual price is, I'm like, that's still pretty steep. If I can find it, I'm I could be convinced. Probably, I, if I and, stay long enough in the store, I could probably that's spend two hundred points. So like, I, I initially, think I'd be like, Ugh. my only concern is that I I think there are whiskeys that we will try mm-hmm. that I have and whiskeys that I've had that have a similar, if not depending on your palate better profile for probably half the cost yeah and this whiskey Mm -hmm. and i'll 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 go first on my rating for me really Mm -hmm. falls into that 7.5 yep range right Mm -hmm. like i this is solidly above average like this is Mm -hmm. This is better than your daily drinker. This is better than that average mark. We aren't giving this a five, right? It's not my favorite whiskey. And it's missing a lot of the flavors that I personally like. Like you aren't getting any chocolate here. I was going to say. Yeah. Go ahead. Go on, King. You aren't getting any chocolate here, you know? And, And so this is one of those where it is perfectly in that above average criteria this is like smack dab in the middle of the above average and i love above average but i don't know if i'm paying above 150 for above average no and so i think my tasting note like my rating is right around a 7.5 and i think my cost for it would be about 130 ish right 140 you know, okay. like if this were in the low hundreds and I saw it I'm getting this every now and then, you know, it has a profile that's interesting. It cuts through really nicely. I think they accomplished what a cigar blend should do. Right. It will cut through harsher flavors if you're eating Absolutely. some of those more like diverse flavors. Like if you're going and you're having a steak and really decadent like butter filled potatoes and like you have all of these decadent oh, flavors right stop this is going to cut through all of that so nicely mm. and i think it does a wonderful job at that um yeah i don't know if 250 is cutting it for me but it's good it's good mm. this is a definitely a whiskey for whiskey enthusiasts Mm-hmm. That you need to try once at least, because this might be right up your alley. Like if you like those tobacco, you know, this is your shit. Kind of tingly yeah. notes where it's it's got just enough burn to make it tingly. This is right up your alley. I, I will take this middle position. Yeah. Um, now, where are you at? This was a breath of fresh air. Yeah, for, we've had we've had a few weeks now. We've had a few weeks of just like kind of like kind of f- trying to find the pace or like just the general uh, level of flavor that we were all kind of looking for. 
And this was a great way for me to realize, yes, there is a benchmark out there and there is, and this is past that benchmark. I will agree with you. This is not my favorite bourbon. This is very tasty. Uh, I kind of alluded to this already earlier, but I this is already hitting most of my flavor uh, yeah. profiles that I want in a bourbon just full stop. That being said, those full stops are f- supposed to be fives. There's, that's supposed to be my benchmark. That's supposed to be something that I'm just like, I step in and, and I'm like, this tastes good. I can afford it. And oh. it's not going and it's not going to cause me to have to freebase my house. You know? Yeah, yeah really. We got to find something that hits those notes that exactly. you want at an affordable price that isn't like the top of the line of those notes, but it hits all yeah. of them. And that'll be yeah. your perfect five. Exactly. Yeah, so you. this is, I would say that this is above my five, wherever that may be. However, knowing the price to this has shifted my scoring for it drastically, to Ooh. be honest. Okay, we better be careful now. What are you, what are you scoring? I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying anything crazy, but I, I'm going to say that this is, this is firmly 6.75. Okay, okay. Oh, 6.75. I was, the only reason why only reason why that price point for the flavors is a lot like take in any general drinker this is no longer a this is no longer a every man's whiskey this is an enthusiast and if you're Agreed. if you're selling to an enthusiast by all means great but okay. if you are selling to an enthusiast and you're expecting an enthusiast's reaction i'm going to need more than just those three flavors for me to say that this is above some of my well, some of the top whiskeys that we will ever taste like yeah. the um, I don't remember the name of the bottle that we were looking at inside of the store when you were visiting us uh, in Houston. Eric, do you remember Thomas H. Handy, the Thomas H. Handy, that thing retails for double this. Yeah, like five, six hundred uh, right, right now. And, and that's 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 enthusiast grade, right? Yeah, yeah. That's also the probably the best ride to release this past year. Really I'm good. just saying. I'm just saying. So if you are already kind of tapping into a quarter of that price, but you are not able to put yourself on the map in terms of being like, hey, we are the top flavor yeah. of this of this year. Yeah, and it's also it's it's this is a hot take, and unfortunately, y'all haven't had the. I'm the same. I understand that this is also the, like my um, hot take. Yes, go ahead. Well, well, just just like I don't think I could rightfully say, and taking Anthony's logic here and just mm-hmm. pricing it back. If I try the Thomas H. Handy and I say, "Hey, that's worth the six hundred you're putting into it," mm. am I going to say that this is uh, that this times three is equal to the Thomas H. Handy? And I, I don't know if I can say that. The Thomas no. H. Handy is way, way better than this. Like to such no a heading, degree yeah. that it's unbelievable. Now, the Thomas H. Handy is right up my alley. I love rise. I love otter whiskeys. That it has a great flavor. It's a very strong rye profile. But this is Well, I think the problem might be that the prices on things like this get exponential. Yeah, but yes. the when we experience insane. it. Our experience doesn't get exponential. We're like, ah, oh, this is six times better. Four Agreed. times better. Agreed. Not a hundred times better. That's yeah. just an over exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. you really I I was reading an article a long time ago where they were talking about like the the pricing. But once you get into uh, and I think it may have been the whiskey tribe that talked about this. Um and they were going through it and saying that once you get to about that $200 range, every, every dollar that you're putting into it is getting a little bit less after that point. Mm-hmm. So the, the $500 whiskey and the $1,000 whiskey aren't that different. They're just a little, yeah. there's just the a little difference. not there. Right? The multiplayer's not there, yeah. That's not to say that they aren't better. It's just that... 
pound for pound, dollar for dollar, you're getting less. Right. And I think like spending too long on a level in risk of rain. Eventually you're you're just shooting yourself in the foot. I don't care how many power ups or monsters you're killing. Next level is going to shit your bread, your bed. It's going to be bad. (laughs) So, so Anthony, what do you, what do you, what do you get? Yeah. So I have a solid score for it with a stipulation. A stipulation. Stipulation. Easily a seven. I, I think it, solidly sits at a seven for me it is a really great experience on its own but i believe i feel very strongly that the three of us at some point need to have a special episode with our dearest friend mark and we need to have this and at least three other bourbons that we all taste together with Mark and a cigar because this is a cigar bourbon. True. True. So what if Accurate. we are not able to experience the full potential? Anthony, have you of had a this cigar before? Bourbon. Have you had a cigar I, before? You saw me sitting there with Mark for hours. Yeah, I was about to say Did we you, were we it. were practicing dancing, okay. Nat, you at and, the bachelor yeah, party. You and, we were Not dancing. Only dancing, y'all were y'all were playing with the volleyball. Too. I'm just I'm just saying I didn't I didn't have a cigar while I was there either, so it's okay. Anthony did. Anthony I had a did. cigar too with Mark. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, having yeah. cigars oh, with Mark outside. I didn't. And catch we were that. and we were having it with the. How um, did you not catch this? You were what? Man, I was dead at the time. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I do think that. Matt got a little stressed out about planning the dance all of a sudden. Just a little. <laughs> hey. Not we, only we that, did but, it. oh, guess what? This little suit is very little. It's very little. <laughs> I was trying to show off your curves. I was trying to show off your curves. Yeah, yeah how do y'all feel about that? that? That sounds like a really fun uh, special guest episode if we were yeah. to... All I'd get together with Mark. And... I could, I could see Nat like, or I could see Mark liking this whiskey a lot. I yeah. think it would be up his alley. I think it has a, a very unique profile, it, especially mm-hmm. when you start considering the tobacco notes. And, and not every whiskey has those tobacco notes in the same way. Yeah, um, yeah. And for those that don't know, Mark did, is our did, did Nat resident. Decide to go expert. and start eating dinner and not invite us or get us anything. Yeah. This is yeah. sharing is caring. My you man. know what this was. Yes. You know what but this was. We are at Nat's hour limit, so if he's chewing, he's still here. That's true. That's true. We need to we need to keep him for just a little oh. bit longer. Sorry, so, sorry, those listeners or watchers. Uh, actually, listeners, you're fine because he's got a great mic. But yeah. watchers, ha, look away. <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding. He's a beautiful eater. He's one of those eaters where you're watching TV and they're eating. And you're like, man, I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah man. How does he do yeah. that? <laughs> I, just spread, I just spread the joy, okay? That's that's my point in life at this point in time. Just like find what, find what it is that like can trigger the base instinct of i need to go ahead and eat sit by a fire and fall asleep that's what i'm here for so that was your that was your rating that was your stipulation mm-hmm. so 7.0 mm-hmm. with the stipulation that we need we're gonna need we to gotta, come we back to this. we got it we gotta because come it, back to it it okay. might grow it might get to like an eight or a nine i'm not, I'm, not, I'm with you on that i am willing to to do that and try that we with you do it justice yeah I, I agree. So, yeah. with that, uh, with that said, what have what have y'all been playing this week? I'll go first. Man. Oh, oh, man. Not, oh, I thought go I was first. gonna step up so he could eat, Let's, but he's got this. Yeah, go for it. it. Go for it. it. Go for it. it. I've been playing, and I'm not ashamed to say oh, this. No, I know it's, been it's a great game. You do. Go ahead, you what if, what if, yeah, we uh, all know we all know what this is. We all know what you're playing. You what, can't what you're playing? lie to us. Monster Hunter. Huh? Monster Hunter. Is that? Monster Hunter? One of the greatest games ever, Monster Hunter. Nope. And oh. well, I mean, he hasn't only been playing that. Okay, He's well, also been know. getting some of that Boulder's Gate. Nope. I saw oh, yeah, you on it last that. night. I did see oh, that. I did play I did it. That. I'm, it's not what I'm hooked on right now. Okay, okay. Ooh. What are you hooked on? Yeah, mysterious now. now yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we want to know. Okay. 
He's glowing. I see an aura. So I have been playing a little uh, gem of a game called Cult of the Lamb. Oh, I've I have played Cult of the Lamb. The new it expansion is... looks cool. And Do you playing it from the beginning with this expansion because I've never played it. Oh, this you is your first time that? through? I've never played it. Wow, okay, okay. I went in blind. I didn't do any cool. form of life, anything. Yeah, that's the way you should do it. It's fun. Started the game and hooked, like, nice. immediate. Yeah, like, it's acne, super nice. The aesthetic is really cute but creepy. Yeah. Mel is disturbed every single time I play it. She's like, I, I don't know whether to love this or find out if I need to... Uh, just pray for you or something so for those of you guys who have not heard of this game the cult of the lamb is a cutesy kind of both uh it's a it's a town builder um you have a cult of cute animals that follow you in worshiping this eldritch being that you uh act as the um sovereign um what would that be a uh, prophet god Oh, yeah. Profit. Profit. Unless you're spoiling something for me, in which case, show no, I don't know. On you. Uh, I thought they were all gods. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you go about killing the pantheon that killed your eldritch god. And as you go through it, the game slowly kind of uh, leaks out this these optimization thing, these optimization tasks. They introduce gambling. They introduce um, famine and hunger and through the entire game, they just keep on layering uh, featurettes after featurettes and little um, uh, asides of choice, to, uh, p- player choice and voice in the game. That I'm just like, this is this is a this is a very special and very good game. Like yeah. they definitely poured so they poured so much fucking talent into this game. This game, like if. Deserves an Oscar, basically. It, the equivalent. It doesn't, des- it doesn't deserve. Like that's it the thing. Does. What are you talking it, about? It, it does. I'm. I'm sorry. Let me. Let me rephrase. It deserves awards. That's what I meant. Th- this should be the level of game that we should be seeing from game developers once every at least two, three years. Like the level of the level of polish that go went into this game. As well as the level of uh, dedication and uh, innovation that they la- layered into almost seasonal content at this point in time, because it released like four years ago, I think. No, 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 no. It's far. It, it released um twenty twenty two. Yeah, twenty twenty two. Two years ago. So it released two years ago, right? Year and a half. Year and a year half. And a half. <laughs> just like. Shut up and let me tell my story, assholes. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> it was four. It was a decade ago. It released game released a decade ago, guys. Anyway, um, but for it to have this l- so, so long of a development cycle, it it puts it already at the level of the super giant game for me. Yeah. It, well, I was gonna say it has a dark bastion vibe to it it, it absolutely it, it plays yeah. a little bit like that bastion so, with a little bit more of those city villager mechanics that you get yeah. in games yeah. like um don't starve don't starve or mm-hmm. the the other one that they did not enough oxygen it really reminds me of bastion combined with not enough oxygen mm. i could see that so i will say that uh, the developer has two games that they made before this. One in 2018 and one in 2019. So yeah, they did a great job in three years after their absolutely uh, thing yeah. to make this. Absolutely. And as a... So I'm a developer of sorts myself, so I understand some of this stuff. Their game is amazing, but in terms of complexity... Very simple. Thanks to the way they did it, it is much simpler than something like Baldur's Gate or mm-hmm. oh, yeah. just, it's just, there's there's other options, types of games that are just so much more complex. Like Valheim. Absolutely. Valheim is very complicated if you want it to be this level of polish. Yeah. So yeah, like from them, this is very great. Like they they've done an amazing job. Yeah. yeah. 
So, so that's what I've been playing, guys. And nice. honestly, after this podcast, I'm probably going to lose another two hours of sleep playing nice. playing it because Worth. the fact that it's on the Switch is not great because the oh, yeah. guys are ass. But I can play it in the bed on mute because I don't want to wake up my wife. So hey, you got to do what you got to do. You do want to give her some of them all of the lamb dreams. Exactly. Checks and balances. Checks yep. and balances. Oh, sa- oh! Before I even like skip over this soundtrack, incredible. Oh yeah, listen to it oh, yeah. on Spotify. Very incredible. Very Every good. single listener who's listening right now, everybody who's watching, the I, artist I don't know his name off the top of my head. Fantastic job. I, I the Great. only yeah. unfortunate thing is that we compared it to Super Giant Games, and I, you can't. I love Cult of the Lamb, <laughs> but you can't. Let's be real. That's oh, daddy right there. I know, right? Like, <laughs> oh man. You don't argue it with daddy. And when he when he says Hades 2, you jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just such a man. Super giant games and music and Darren Corb just in, uh, brilliant. Slayed it. All right. Brilliant. Uh I I I I see the rest of my time. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, what have you been oh, playing this week? I'm trying to remember because I'm so distracted by Call of the Lamb now. You know, oh. I'm wondering whether or not Nat has the new tent. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we can't spoil it for him because. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. Anyways, so what have I been playing? There are some games called. No, there's just one game. I'm pretty sure there's only one game I've been playing lately, and that game is called Power World. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, so good. It is insanely good for an early access game the developers have done have have given us what so many you know pocket monster fans have been wanting for years 100 percent, and it's incredible i mean there's just like first off there's something about base building that i think many 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 of us really enjoy yeah. And almost every game would be improved by having base building. World of Warcraft, oh my god, if they had a home, like, that would be amazing. And, and I've heard that Final Fantasy has that, but the only problem with Final Fantasy is they haven't fixed the fact that it takes 200 hours for that game to get good. And I, not, I haven't been able to do that yet. So... Hey, you got a long time yeah, in that but, one. But like, you know, Star Citizen's going to have base building and and that looks incredible. Valheim was one of the not first, obviously, but the first ones to really like kind of blow up in a way because it's, it's mostly just base building, really. Yeah. I mean, there's awesome. It is base I, think, I think Rust yeah. may have been a little bit earlier than Valheim. And that was kind of the yeah. that was kind of the start of this era, honestly, was kind of Rust. Some some did it before then, mm-hmm. but I think Rust was the one that. Uh, like brought it to the market in such a way that every other developer was like, we have to do, we got to do it. We got to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, uh, man. Yeah. But like power world, it just hits all the marks. I mean, when you are trying to catch your pals, it's so satisfying. Um, I was recently taught that I should always be recording because I caught a pal and I jumped around and somehow I went to space. And when I go to space, I die. Um, Wait, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. (laughs) Did you clip out of the world space or space space? I jumped, somehow accidentally climbed on the pal fear i think is what they call it that was in the process of successfully catching the pal and apparently when that's done it's not obvious to you but it flies straight up in the air really fast and i either slipped off or it disappeared and then i fell to my death yeah definitely (laughs) definitely a bug uh... Oh, okay. They, so they have an bug. issue with the uh, the the physics there. You essentially don't lose the access. physics. Yeah, you Got probably it. shouldn't be able to jump on a pal sphere that's mm-hmm. in the middle of catching something. So, but it's so sad. like they've got great sound design when you're catching those things. It's so satisfying, and you and once you get like more uh, 
so if you catch 10, you get a bonus. So eventually you're like, I'm going to go and catch them all. And you're running around catching them all. And, and it's really satisfying to have like, bing, 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 bing. Like they're all being caught at the same time because they're low level and easy, right? And, and then at the same time, like the combat is just really satisfying. You can roll, you can attack things and you shoot a gun at a freaking harmless animal. Yeah. Look at this. I didn't, I didn't realize you can mount your, your like, Oh, pause. Your runner, your pal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking about a land based mount. I haven't tried this on a, on a flying mount, but you can be riding your like wolf guy and you can pause. <laughs> <laughs> but your pal you can command them to attack while you're on them which is incredible and then at the same time you can actually use your weapon if it's a ranged weapon and and it's just so cool like the dis- the level of discovery in this game is like top notch when it comes to uh not having spoilers and just being like oh you can do that oh my god you can do this and you know, there's just been an aspect of that that, you know, a game that I won't mention is never delivered where you're like, you know, I wish I could, like, be in the action and tell it to do this and and actually be, like, in charge a bit. And it's like, oh, guess what? Okay. Create a saddle. Hop on the saddle. Yeah. Now you're in charge. Go ahead. If you're not on the saddle, though, they'll, they'll do what they want and they'll figure it out themselves. So what you're saying oh. is you were gro- you have been growing up in this specific game that we will not mention and constantly thinking they I want to punch that bitch in the face. <laughs> yes. And if he gets out of line, there's a butcher's knife. I mean, I know, I know. No, but memes aside, like, yeah, they, it, it's, it's silly to think that, oh, those monsters are just gonna fight and i'm gonna watch i'm just gonna stay on the sidelines and yeah it's gonna happen i'm not yeah. here oh you killed my monster well don't mind me i'm just gonna pick them up and walk away like mm-hmm. no no i got these hands dog yep. <laughs> in this uh so, ak-47 exactly now yeah. i have a question don't go too deep into it because obviously i i know you you guys do Gun. <laughs> how gun f- heavy is this game it's not because guess what mm-hmm. i don't even have a gun yet and i've played it for many many hours so let, uh, i like, think the way to consider it is break it off into levels and think mm-hmm. this it has a leveling scheme similar to many other games where every level that you get it takes a little bit longer to get the next level okay from one to 50 i think is the max level or something like that you aren't going to get a gun. Your first gun, which is like a, a fucking Civil War musket, mm-hmm. happens at like level 20, 25. Oh, okay. Okay. So and at that so you point, you feel different. very experienced. Yeah. Got it. So, I mean, by the time you're dealing with a gun, and that's a single shot, it takes forever to reload gun. Mm-hmm. You can... There are some pals you can get super early in the game and you can get by it, get an upgrade for them and they'll shoot, but it feels very underwhelming until you get you know, much oh my later. God. In. Nat, Eric, y'all just gave me an amazing idea. Don't do this it. Game, not in this, this game. Don't th- do it. This game, Don't but do Monster it. Hunter. Only Monster Hunter like There's weapons. a game like that. There's a game like that. What game? Monster, Monster Hunter made a game like that where you fought alongside of the monsters that you caught and they were uh, um, they were franchise I heard about monsters, that, but I didn't you fight think other you... monsters. Yeah. You don't have you you have weapons akin to akin to Monster Hunter as mm-hmm. well, I I think. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm very curious now because yeah, I remember about that and I think Sherman was freaking out about it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, This is amazing. So the only thing that misses is like several other mechanics, you know, the gathering and the base mm-hmm. building and stuff like that. But yeah, like I, I cuz I can see how it might be a little weird with the the guns and stuff, but it would be so much more epic if you were fighting, you know, the giant monster at the end game and you yeah. were freaking climbing on top of it, dodge rolling, stuff like that. Your monsters over here trying to help 
but like it can only do so much, you know? Yeah. Okay. So Power World. World. Yeah. Power World is great. Okay. It is insanely great for an early access game. Yeah. For early access, it's extremely polished. I mean, there are definitely issues and uh, like uh, things that they can improve upon. It isn't no game's the, perfect, but the, like the biggest thing it's to so me good is for that an early access. It was like thirty. It's like thirty dollars, twenty five dollars on sale, it's cheap, and yeah. and I I think the first thing I said to Eric was like. How are we spending seventy, eighty dollars on these AAA Dude, games when I this game exists know. and it is so much fun? I and those games exist, know. and they're like the same thing and over and over again. And they got polish ish, but they have problems too. Before we jump from Power World, <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. I will eventually try this game. So just go ahead and we have a server your, for you. Your angry face. Go calm your we have face. a dedicated uh, server where yeah. you can all be together. I've heard yeah. great things. So be with us. us. Have you guys also clued into Enshrouded? Yes. I don't know what that is. Okay. I, I so, have Eric. If you want to talk about it, by all means, go ahead and during so, your portion. But I've heard that these two games coming out have pretty much set the statement. Like, look, one of these, the Enshrouded was like, I'm not even going to change my release date whenever Pal World came out and still is doing an amazing job. And then you have these major blockbuster games that are out right now. Like the finals is pretty much uh, the first person shooter that was supposed to be a COD killer, right? And I don't know if you've paid attention to the numbers or anything, but it's like it's com- the number of players is completely like halved, I think, in the in the span of them releasing. Oh, so, the finals like plummeted, like yeah, completely yeah. bottomed. Yeah, I mean, so we like, played that, yeah. and I was like, yeah, it's, on yeah, it, but it's there's okay. major problems. Yeah, like, there are huge problems. problems in our game. And that speaks to the same issue that I think that you were bringing up. How are we paying for these sixty, seventy uh, dollar games that are giving us very shallow and and engagement in terms of not even not even just story because that's that's me i need a story but shallow in uh shallow engagement in terms of skill or nuance like novelty there's nothing there's nothing that you're bringing to the table that something else is not already doing in a way that satisfies the itch that you're trying that you're trying to say right yeah so this I, Power World thing is a huge boom because we have been wait like uh, what was it? Tem- it starts with a T. Um, Temtem. Temtem? Temt- Temtem was the first game I think that got close to satisfying this yeah. want for Pokemon to be what we thought it was going to be as we were yeah. growing up. But it was and a bit pa- too similar. It was too yeah, similar. And now t- I feel like Pal World has hit that like perfect. Well, not perfect because the lawsuits are already piling in. But sorry, no, not piling in. But like people are saying, like this ah, is a little, this is a little dude, fishy. There's a lot it, of good they're, videos they're about a, that. They're, I don't they're think they're getting gonna a get lot of okay, videos. Well, of things, dubious press, things. dubious press, dubious press. So I, I, I get why people are feeling kind of weird because it's so close to that perfect formula. I think that's the reason why people are like all sorts of upset. This didn't happen with Temtem, right? The reason why Nintendo is the sorry granddaddy, whatever his name is, is upset. The only reason why these things are happening and fanboys are really losing their mind is because they see the traction and they see the enjoyment that a lot of people, I think, are pulling from this style of game and what it's supposed to be. Not what it was whenever you were a child and you were going through nostalgia, obviously, but you are in 2024 enjoying a 2024 version of an actual uh, monster capture game. Two things. I see my time. Two things. (laughs) One, this is what Power World is what Pokemon Arceus should have been. Sir, you can't say say those words. They'll come for us. (laughs) They'll come for us. I have been to an official Dragon Con convention thing where they educated us that every this by the way the guy that was giving this presentation was a doctor and like this topic every pokemon that exists is based off of a real animal on the planet earth and and that is why 
nothing is Trubish new. Trubbish is not time. based on an animal, dude. Don't even start with me. Don't. They are. Know. They are. No. Trubbish is not. Up. Trubbish is a garbage can. No, 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 no. We're not doing this. We're not doing. There are animals that live in garbage cans. They're called raccoons. Raccoons, baby. The actual bag. I'm not saying the trash. I'm saying the animal inside of a trash can or a trash bag. The trash bag itself. Don't. 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 Now, I will. Anyways, Eric, not you either. Under the not sun. you either. No. Nothing is new under the sun. Well, the only Absolutely. thing I'll it's say. A, move, a, 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 a song. It's just like Fair. a song, man. I'm literally just firing back at you for the statement that you just made saying that every single Pokemon is based on an animal. You are full of poop, sir. <laughs> Chingling oh, is literally a is literally a ring of key. Sorry, no. Chingling is a literally literal wind chime. No, no, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but you sorry. Of, wait, I'm sorry, you're not wrong. Yeah, but you get a bunch of wasps in your wind chimes and they start moving it around. You're like, the oh, article is wrong. There it is. The article is wrong. No, there it is. The article is wrong. <laughs> I I will say it, the only thing that I would say on the subject is that I and I think. There are a few other people that have talked about this from like um, pirate software to like legal eagle and a few others. The, mm -hmm. the only thing of note is that this would be a local lawsuit. Both the power developers and the Pokemon developers are in Japan where they have like super strict IP and copyright mm -hmm. infringement laws. Mm -hmm. And those things can happen locally and very, very quickly. Nintendo has taken down many a company before before they even release a game. So the True. fact that we've known about Power World, or I shouldn't oh, say wow. we, but the the market in uh, Game Freak in general has known about Power World for at least a year and a half, two years since their first announcement. And the fact that no lawsuit has been done yet is telling. Yeah, it, it's pretty Very telling. Clear. That yeah. there is almost nothing that they could go after. And there really isn't a lot for them to go after. They would have to prove somehow that one of the developers intentionally copied their art. And they're never going to admit to that. Well, not even admit. The, it, it, admission wouldn't be enough in this case. They'd have to see that like there's a video clip of them overlaying the images or something like fair, that. You know? Fair. Like, yeah. At this point. There's just not a lot of evidence that they could use, it. right? Yeah. And so most likely there's gonna be no lawsuit. With all that said, the game freak has sued other companies and started mm -hmm. suing other companies from the mm -hmm. time since Power World was released about Pokemon and other things like that. They are not afraid afraid of litigation. They're it's a litigious organization. Not it's just they can't the crosshairs. It, yeah. And it's not even that it's not in the crosshairs. They'd probably love to sue them for some reason because uh, uh, there's nothing that they can go after and their lawyers probably they I'm they glad. know more. I'm right. oh, glad. And I'm all, so the people glad. that are mad about this, they they should be excited because the better Power World does, the more likely it is that the next version of Pokemon Arceus is a very polished and insane version of Power World. Well, that's the thing. Well, it blows Loki, Power World away. They, they are in such a position to dominate the market because you Absolutely. can guarantee that if Game Freak came out and did a game like this with actual Pokemon with more huge. polish, it most people would will forget huge. about Power no, no, no. or they yeah, never but, know it even happened. But, 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 and I'm sorry to run over you. I'm so sorry. Um, game Freak has not spent more than a year on a game for quite some time. Yeah. They have been forced into a development cycle that is nigh on impossible to support with innovation because oh, of Lord. Nintendo's necessary uh, uh, requirement for a Pokemon game almost every single year. Yeah. You can look at literally Sword and Shield to Scarlet and Violet and look at and basically have pretty much the same style of game. Right? Yeah. Same style. I'm not saying like same systems or whatever, but it's the same game in terms of just like the base experience. I don't I don't think anybody wants to enter into a form of dealing with reality 
and have the exact same uh, experience that they had last year today. Well, I think especially with especially with a game that's asking for full price. Yeah, but I think the thing is that you're you're you might be thinking about it from our perspective, but Pokemon's market is all about nostalgia. Oh, yeah. So their goal. Yeah, 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 but no, but they're doing it better than Blizzard is. Right. Of course, they are. we remember red and blue fondly. Guess what? People in the generation after us. They're remembering Ruby and Emerald. No, nope. Gold and Silver. Gold and Silver. Yeah, no, because no, Gold and Silver no, no, was Eric's like ours. Right, because he's describing my wife. Yeah. <laughs> no, it goes. It goes. No, 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 no. Blue. I'm no. just saying generationally. Oh, it, oh, generationally. No, generationally. You're, 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 you're sorry, both sorry, sorry. right. Yes. yes. We're both yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every <laughs> generation, they catch some people yes. to make some nostalgia from they, at the right. Exactly. Year. They are no. trying to capture the minds of the 8 to 11 year old mind. And they are releasing, and like, one of the coolest things, and, and they're doing this intentionally, I can almost guarantee it. If you look at their release cycle, they are releasing their main Pokemon games right around the generational gaps yeah. so that they so catch purpose, yeah. a new mm-hmm. generation. Every time they make these huge releases so that mm-hmm. they're getting the new eight and 12 year olds, they always release them with the new consoles, right? Mm-hmm. So the thing is, and you, that's why when we play it, we're like, eh? this is the same thing. <laughs> like, I wanted more, man. It's, it's like, not like, our Pokemon, mm-hmm. right? It's not our Pokemon. Scarlet and Violet weren't made for us. It shouldn't be made for us. That is not their mm-hmm. intention or goal, right? And I don't think they're doing bad. I, I bet the um sales on scarlet and violet are the 23.23 million units sold like they're doing fine fine. and they're doing exactly what they want to do well now it's getting compounded because now you have people our age with kids that are the right age Mm -hmm. they're, they're like Oh, you want to play Pokemon? Yeah, yeah, I'll play the new Pokemon yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, it's it great. Yeah, I don't care what's going on. It's it's, it's yeah. wonderful for them. Exactly, and it, it, that's why it's like, I honestly, I don't think it's a bad business move. Nor do I frown upon them not innovating that much because they shouldn't. That game is timeless in a lot of ways. It's super mm-hmm. simplistic. You can at like five six years old you can go in and beat pokemon and that's how it should be because we want the next generation to be able to understand it it is literally one of the only generational connections that like people in the 90s and 80s have with people that were born after the 2000s is that pokemon is still a staple in the worldwide community regardless of who you are it's one of the most known franchises in existence and it's not because they keep innovating or making the game quote unquote better it's because it play it's still the same game it still plays like red and blue we can talk to an eight-year-old about scarlet and violet and we understand the game that they're playing and we can communicate It, it creates a communication connection that almost no other game does because they try to innovate and change the game Right. The the biggest thing about what we just said there was the simplistic part because yeah. it's insane how hard it is for us to realize that when we play a game like Pal World, there needs to be like a oh, you probably should have been playing like five or ten or fifteen years worth of games to actually be able oh to God. play this game. Because it's insane when you take someone that's never played a game and you try to play something that seems easy and simple, like maybe Sea of Thieves. And it turns out that game is insanely complex. And you had no idea that that game is insanely complex. Yeah. Even though it's a game that should be easy for a newcomer, because who doesn't want a pirate? Yeah. And so Fair. at the same time, I, I, I mean, I've given a lot of uh, towards Pokemon, but they're doing a service of keeping things simple enough for people that have little to no experience in mm-hmm. games. 
Now, with all that said, that isn't to say I wouldn't welcome a more complicated Pokemon <laughs> Power World style game. <laughs> let it not be said. <laughs> but um, I did not ask for this. Yeah. Now, I, I, I would say I have one Power World story. Yes. Because this... So, in Power World, them off. there are raids. Okay. Things These come... Raids- Wait, no. Raid, there's two types of raids. No, this is the raid on your base. The raid on Monsters. Your base. They come, they attack, you kill, everything's dandy. Right? Now, mm. I have found the perfect base spot. I have a mountain mansion. It sits on a cliffside. I overlook the sunset. It's badass. I'm the fuck out. I have been to your mountain mansion, and the first thing I said to this man was, you know... If this game already had PvP, I feel like this would be the perfect base because I'm confused and I don't know where I am. Bro! I, he made a maze! I, I finished it. I finished it. It's not a maze. He finished it. was it. a mansion. <laughs> it was beautiful. It took, uh, you know, a few hours to fully complete. Right? And, and the monsters come and I kill them every single time. Every single time they die like clockwork. Uh-huh. I get on... And this day, it was, it was late at night. I just wanted to get on, move some ore from the completion stack to the chest. And I get on. Make sure no one has an ulcer. Yeah, make sure nobody else, all my pals are doing good. Put some, you know, first aid their wounds and all that nonsense. And I get on and it's like, there's a raid. And I'm like, ah, I have no issue with this. Come hither. I will destroy you. And mm-hmm. this giant imp dude peeks his head over the, the, the path. The horizon. Yes, <laughs> over the horizon with the sun at his back. And he starts throwing fire at my pals. But my pals are invincible, essentially, compared to whatever this shit is. He's like level 15. Uh, all my pals are like level 25. It was a slaughter. But in his dying breath, he releases a fireball that misses all of my pals and goes straight into my mansion. (laughs) At this point, things break down because now I remember. That's right. I unlocked the Stone Age. I have not redone my mansion in the Stone Age because all of my mansion is wood and the wood catches fire. And I was like, that's cool that it catches fire. But for some reason on this, the the server that we're playing on, the health just seemed to go down so fast. (laughs) Everything started. I just hear (sighs) as pieces of my mansion start to explode into the things that they were made from. And one by one, I watch my panel, uh, my whole mansion, every single panel of it start to just get des- destroyed by this fire. I have water, pals, but it wasn't enough. Just one by one until you know what remained of my base? Nothing. Nothing is immune to fire. It all died. Only this is when Eric learned always be recording. <laughs> Man, <laughs> an idiot. So what have you been shit. playing, Eric? So the Power World. I've been doing a lot of Power World, but uh, uh, Anthony kind of covered that really well. So I was going to talk about the new Kickstarter that just released. Mm-hmm. So I, for a lot of my life, he leaves right when the story starts. What is this nonsense? I, I, I was just about to start the story, and he was like, peace. We are, we are working on 35 minutes of, of borrowed time here. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. He is supposed to be gone. He does have to wake up in like five hours. Ooh. Wait, five hours? Jeez. Okay, I'm exaggerating. That's me. Oh. Uh, he does have to, I'm just kidding. Well, exaggerating again, but I do know he wakes up at like 5.30 his time, I think. Yeah, he, do, he does wake up super early. So... Yeah. Nat doesn't need to hear the opening to this, really. I, for a lot of my life, I've been playing Magic the Gathering and other card games. I've played many a card game. I've gone to conventions and played card games. 
I have a lot of cards. I think you can actually see some in the background of my video here on my desk. I have some of my magic cards. Um, there is a new TCG coming out. It just went on a Kickstarter. It's called Altered TCG. Heard about it. Now, I've been playing it on a... Uh, so, right now, you can actually play on BoardGameArena.com. The interface is pretty nifty, actually. It works for the most part. Uh, it was a, it's pretty fun, too. I, I was going to see if I could play it with whoever wanted to stay. Maybe Anthony and I could play a game afterwards and record it uh, for, the, for the people. But, Enjoy, my friends. But it's really quite novel. It's definitely different. I don't know if I like it yet. I've only played a few games. Um, but there are a few novel ideas. So unlike other card games and magic and all these other things, you're trying to kill the other person. In this game, you don't interact too much with the other person. Instead, you have a companion and a hero. And they start on opposite ends of the board. And every card that you're playing gets them closer and closer together. When your hero and companion meet each other, you win the game. Whoever does it first wins the game. And so you can kind of interact with your other person's cards, right? And there's a mechanic of as you move, they can't move or vice versa. Um, but it's a very interesting idea. Now, like any card game, it has a mana system. but Unlike Magic or Hearthstone, it kind of follows the, if anybody's ever played the universes card game style, where every card in your deck can be mana in general. So at the beginning of each turn, you sacrifice a card and you get mana for that card. And so your cards work both as a card you can play or mana, so you never have a case of running out of mana for the turn, right? And uh, it's pretty novel. It, it's a lot of fun. I was able to win a few games. I played um, with some friends after my Gloomhaven session on Monday. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, worth checking out. I, I don't know if I agree with how they're doing the Kickstarter in general. Um, uh, well, Why? so their Kickstarter is pretty interesting. They're really treating it like a card game similar to magic now oh i totally forgot one of the main uh ideas behind this so unlike other card games every card has a qr code and you can scan it and you own that card on their digital app at any point in time you can order a copy of that card you own the card both from a digital perspective and a physical perspective hmm. that seems cool to me yeah, it, it, that part is really novel. If they pull it off, and I would say that is one stipulation of this game. If this Kickstarter goes well, which so far it's doing really well. If it goes well and they deliver on this seamless app, QR, physical to digital interaction, this game is going to shoot off. It's going to be amazing. I think that is key in the lifetime of this game. But... Um, the Kickstarter is treating it very much like a magic type of system, uh, uh, like a, a magic TCG type of system where you can buy starter decks and every Kickstarter goal add on and everything like that are really just more chances in the boosters that you get. So it's just random chance. So paying more into this Kickstarter doesn't really seem worth it in a lot of ways. No. It seems like you get the two starter decks and maybe a few boosters and you call it a day. Um, and that seems weird to me. I would have loved to have seen their Kickstarter do more physical um, aspects of the game. They have this really nice map and then you have some tokens that you need. I would have loved to see like nice custom Kickstarter tokens and paraphernalia that had to do with the map and things like that. That you could essentially say like, hey, I back this and I got this awesome neoprene mat that and these like custom metal tokens. Right. But instead, yeah. you're just weird, getting bro. boosters. 
I see what you're saying because I was looking at the Kickstarter and yeah, when you go to pledge, there's only like four options. But when you're looking at the page, there's like not just the cards, the, but oh, the here's a map. Why yeah, can't I just do mat? Yeah, it's in the add-ons. Yeah, and you can mm -hmm. add on like the mat and the the deck box which they have mm -hmm. with add-ons. But I really would love to see a, a token Some, upgrade with something. Uh, yeah, as you get more, they have some alternate some art. Out. Yeah, like yeah. I'd love to see the paraphernalia. Like I love the concept. I love the 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 card game is pretty fun to play. I think it's a really interesting concept. I'd love to see it succeed. I'm probably going to pledge for one of the amounts. Um, but I don't know if I can in good conscience say that you should support more than the lowest level of the Kickstarter because I don't think anything besides the cheaper starter packs are really worth it for the average consumer um, right now, especially when you Fair. don't know how this will do, right? So, for example, these packs are going to be cheaper than the MSRP at. But if they release this game and it turns out the app's only okay, the QR shipping integration is only okay, and this game kind of falls into, let's, let's give it a, a good example. Yeah. It falls into the middle of the pack. Those boosters don't mean anything to me from this Kickstarter. Yeah. They're essentially yeah. worthless. But if they gave yeah. me a nice neoprene mat or nice metal tokens, then when I do use the starter packs, I know I backed the Kickstarter and I got solid physical aspects of this game to go with. That's gravitas. Yeah. yeah. There's like a there's like a weird illusion, or maybe there's a better word for it here, which is that the coolest thing about this game is to me, oh, every card I get in real life can be digitalized. Yeah. I've always wished that Magic the Gathering would do that. Yep. Oh, well, that sounds a lot like Tim Tim to Pokemon. Yep. You know, or it's yeah. like, Tim Tim, oh man, that's great. I actually really like what they did, but I'm not compelled to play it. No. Yeah. So, but I do hope that these guys accomplish something here, you know. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And I will say the game is uh, pretty novel. It's pretty fun. I think the they're playing it a little too safe uh, mm. in a lot of ways, but... Yeah. The few games that I've played have been extremely enjoyable, and it definitely is a more lighthearted, relaxing card game, for sure. I will say that if they create a Steam version of the card game play and it. release it, that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I think this will be like the digital card game of the future in a lot of ways where you can get those digital versions and maybe even order some physical copies. And like that back and forth is going to be really cool. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, what would be really insane is if they somehow made it to where you could, you know, basically have that Yu-Gi-Oh thing on your arm and go in real life and play people with real cards with your yeah. digital card. Well, this, yeah. will, this is like the first step in that concept. There is one yeah. other thing that's really cool too. You always like getting foil, cool looking cards and mm -hmm. they haven't shown a good picture yet of what the foil is going to look like. But in this game, you don't get foil cards. You get foil cards. <laughs> so you get, a, you get a foil card, and then you can apply it to any of your other cards. So for example, you get a rare foil, and it's just a card with like, it's gold and it says it's skins foil. for cards, dude. It's skins for cards. You turn you scan that foil yeah. in the app, and then you can turn any other card you own into a foil into card. A foil. Yeah. It's skins for foil for cards. And so then instead of like uh, 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 for Magic the Gathering, you get a foil card and you can't use it. In this game, if you get a foil card, you can give it to your main deck that you only use. And at some point, you might have a fully foil deck. Okay, but in real life, is that card foiled, or did you get a token? For you get foil it's a, it's a token, so they um. So you don't get a real life foil. No, you will get a real life foil. You just have to apply it to a card and then sh 
have them ship you that foil card. Because remember, you can always have them ship you, sk- you your you card. Skin, you skin the card with the foil. They ship that skin hey, wait, on that card to, that's your, okay. to your door. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's no, actually so cool. better. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's, exactly. It's that's what I'm saying. That's a, that's a really cool idea because a lot of people are like, oh, I love foil cards, but I'm not going to pay 20 extra dollars for this card to be foil, right? In this game, your favorite card will be foil because you're going to be like, oh, I got the unique. And that leads us to the last part of this game that is pretty novel. There are different rarities, common, rare, and unique. Just three. Unique cards are entirely unique. Nobody else has them. Nobody else has that combination. It is a one-of-one unique card. It's legendary. Like when legendary meant legendary. Actually, it meant legendary, yeah. Now, they have a system in place. Specifically, if one unique starts winning too many tournaments, they have a way to uh, Restrict. restrict them. But... If you're not playing in tournaments, you might have a unique that is unique. Uh, well, not even that. You'll have a unique that is unique, but you might have a unique that is pretty overpowered for like the digital and physical, physical. versions. Yeah. Um, oh, because you don't get regulated because you're not a tournament player. Exactly. And so mm. these unique cards are entirely unique, and there's about one for eight boosters. So in one of those display boxes, you're looking at about uh how many are i think there's 32 so one in six you're looking at about five uniques per display box yeah it essentially has the same rarity as a mythic rare it replaces the mythic rare entirely from like magic gathering they have a uh a large set of properties uh, where they, uh, from what I understand, and this is me making a few assumptions because they haven't come out and given us the full breakdown on how they do it. I'm imagining they have a large set of properties. Those properties, they have a certain chance of happening. They create them onto the c- a card. They generate a hash for that. And that hash can't ever be produced again. Mm. and then they're going to keep adding properties with each set to that set of uh, like available set of properties so as t- more things become available it becomes more and more unlikely, unlikely for there to be collisions to have it. yeah got it yeah um i'm imagining that's how they're going to do it uh from what i understand from their video and their descriptions they will be truly unique and there's so many permutations of this data set that they're not worried about that. But mm-hmm. me, yeah. huh. I will check. That's pretty night. That was pretty night. We'll see. With that, I mean, our awesome Naticus has been here for almost twice as long as he promised us. Uh huh. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not. That's not entirely true. Only thirty minutes. We're only 32 minutes over his time frame. I'm looking at the recording time when I started recording. Oh my god. We've been going this, for an hour and 30 this minutes. This man. This man. This man. But this man. With that, this man. we'll uh we we'll see you in the next whiskey. one. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful what we love you guys. Whiskey. Yeah. And we'll see I you in the next one. Guys. Bye. Peace.